so good. <laughs> this is where you start. You need a countdown? Let me count you in. One, wait, three. Truly, really, you count me in from one? One, go! Now we have time for the intro. <laughs> one, go. Count in the intro, Alexis! One. Hello and welcome to the Candyman store. I am your host, C7 Viper. Oh, you thought I was going to say Candyman. <laughs> Not yet, I didn't put the things on. I'm filming this on the day that I was supposed to be at Rev. That's right, it got canceled this year. Balak had no choice because the state of Virginia put a bunch of restrictions on them and they couldn't have it legally. So what better to commemorate this event that should have happened but to do a video about past Rev events. But first, I'm going to open this. This was sent to me by Caleb Tucker Airsoft. Feels like, I'm going to say papers. No, might be a refrigerator. I got a regular boring old knife to open it. There's a paper. I was right. It's a paper. It's from Caleb and it says, Dear C7 Viper, I feel a Brad Pitt is more suitable for your channel. And then down here it says, what's in the box? Two Jag Arms pistols from ASGI. Much love, Caleb Tucker Airsoft. And then there's something else in here. Mm. A Caleb Tucker Airsoft patch. There's the patch. All right. Should I? You can do this. Oh, is it in camp? Like, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we gotta put it in a better spot, but uh, how's that spot? Yes, that's a good spot. I like that right there. Thank you, Caleb Tucker Airsoft. I love that the patch section from you guys is growing. That's This is like the highlight of the patch wall behind me. I like that everyone here can see it. Now that we got Caleb's patch, I'm gonna show you a couple cool things I was planning on bringing to this event. First, was this box and in this box was something you will never believe bubble wrap no not that and there wasn't paper either but this is money cash hundreds whole bunches of them and i know what you're thinking is he the new mr beast not even close none of this is even remotely real it really looks like it though doesn't it it's like a million dollars this is like literally the most money that i've ever seen in my life if it was real but it is not i got all this prop money from a website called prop orange and they sell prop money they reached out and wanted to know if i wanted to do a video about some prop money and i was like how does that fit into airsoft Hmm. But then Alexis was like, uh, yo, you go to an event where you trade bunches of stuff. Why don't you just get it for that? And I was like, duh, great idea. I got the monies and it arrived in this box really quickly. And now I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I guess we are going to wait until Rev comes around and I'm going to bring this with me and we're going to make it a quest and I'll give away some of these stacks, these fat stacks of fake money. They actually look really realistic except for right here it says for motion picture use only and then on the back it says the same thing for motion picture use only at the top and that's really the only difference from the real money so i guess you could say this is the best kind of paper that i could get if only it were real so i am going to be bringing these with me to at least Rev or Fertile Crescent, whatever's next. And we're gonna think of some really cool quests and giveaways for some of this. Maybe I'll play some pranks on some guys in the parking lot, like drop a few bucks and record their reaction when they find out it's fake. That would be kind of funny. I think I might even use some of this in a scenario game at my field in some gameplay because we used to do this bank robbery scenario where we would steal these fake piles of money and it was really just ripped up paper but this is a lot nicer again it was prop orange thanks to them for sending me this so that i would have some epic props to give away at rev even though it's not happening now this year but 2021 is coming soon so look out for this and the next cool thing that i was gonna bring with me was candy i was gonna bring 
a whole bunch of candy. One of my friends from way back in the day, his name is Tyler, he used to run a company called Rapid Fire Airsoft. He eventually got out of the airsoft industry and opened his own candy store. And he reached out to me on Instagram and was like, hey man, I've got candy and you're the candy man. Let's make this happen. And I thought that was a great idea. I can't believe I didn't think of it because he and I talk a bunch and I went and visited his store. It's in Lancaster, PA. So his store is called Swedish. That's sweet-ish. And it's a Swedish candy store. And they have a whole bunch of awesome candies and snacks, snacticles, you guys know. And he offered to give me a bunch of candy to take with me to give out at Rev. Now that's not happening. He called these the eight millimeter BB candies. And he told me to try shooting them out of a gun, so I'm going to still have to try that. I'm going to see if I can shoot these out of an 8mm pistol or something. They might be a little too big, they might require modification, but I think I'm going to try it. He also wanted to do a giveaway for my subscribers. So if you guys are watching right now, you get a heads up. But I'm going to do a giveaway on Instagram. So you can only win if you have an Instagram. And all you have to do is follow me on Instagram, and then follow Swedish. Lancaster on Instagram and I'll put up a post when it's time. It's not happening yet, but it will be and then you'll have to comment on the giveaway post to let me know that you follow both of them and that's it and you will get I think it's a gift card for his store and he has an online website. He'll ship all over. Go check that out if you like candy like I do. I got to tear into these myself and actually try them. I don't know what kind these are but they look really good. Please guys, go check out his store, it's awesome. Alexis and I went and visited one day. This was well before all this craziness went down in 2020. We spent a lot of money. Uh, yeah, we spent a ton of money on all this like great chocolate and gummies and sour candy and it was just crazy. He has a wall of candy that you can select whatever you want and Ugh. I think I spent like three hours in that store. It was insane. So yes, go check him out and look for that giveaway very soon on my Instagram. Just look up C7 Viper. You'll find me. You'll see. You'll know who I am. And now I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I, the candy man of Rev, use at Revelations. So first, I'm going to go with the hat. I have three different top hats, but this is the one I started with and the main one I use. It's just a standard old top hat. It's called the Mad Hatter, and I always put some goggles on top. Not only do the goggles look cool, but sometimes if I need to swap out from fog or something, I can just walk off the field, swap them, and then I've got a brand new pair of goggles ready to go. I rarely do that though, because as a role player, we don't get to run around and shoot. We just kind of stay in our area and do our thing. Uh, role players aren't allowed to have weapons. We can have weapons, but they can't be live and functioning. We can't shoot at players because we're supposed to be invincible and that doesn't stop people from shooting us. And then also you'll see the yellow ribbon. The yellow ribbon denotes a role player that you cannot kill. And we're supposed to have them usually on our hats, our arms, our legs, so that everyone can see. And again, that doesn't stop people from shooting. I get shot a lot. So that's the iconic hat. And then I usually have something to hold my hair up into the hat so it's not all crazy. Plus this also keeps my head a little warm. I just got to remember to take this off before I go into the convenience store in the morning to get whatever drinks or food for the day because this, this doesn't look normal for public. And then you'll notice underneath my plate carrier I have a leather jacket. Now I always wear that at Rev because it's kind of cold, it's the winter, it's December. So I wear a couple layers and then I put the leather jacket on over it and the leather also protects me from anything rubbing or any sharp bits on this literal plate carrier. It is a license plate carrier. I built this thing out of a whole bunch of license plates that I found at a flea market and I just went through and drilled a bunch of holes and zip tied them together. And I know you're thinking, why zip ties? Doesn't that sound kind of cheap? It's meant to flex and if a zip tie breaks, it's super easy to just put on a new one. I keep them with me at the op. If I bolted them together, I feel like the bolts would be stabbing me in the back, rubbing on my arms and chest and stuff. Zip ties don't really interfere with anything at all. When I built this, it was kind of basic. I think I have a photo from the first day I built it. I'm going to put it right here. So as you can see, there was like nothing to it. And now you can see it is just a, a wasteland in itself. That's because Literally every op I put things on and don't take them off. The only time I ever actually remove something is if I trade it, which is rare, or if it falls off and I can't put it back on. That's happened a couple times. But I can walk you through a few of the things we have on here that I've traded for. Now, I know most of you know the little platypus. This is a beanie baby. Someone traded me 
and we just zip tied it right there and there's next to the beanie baby is the one ring to rule them all i also have these vault access cards somebody traded me a whole bunch of these and i kept the vault inspector card for myself i've got a few pairs of handcuffs i think there's two pairs here one's broken here is a custom Candyman bottle opener that my friend Blake at Hammerhead Knife Works made and he gave it to me at Rev 7. I got a couple other ones, a couple other bottle openers down here that other people made. There's some fingers. These little bands here, the first Rev I went to, I gave these bands out to people to denote that they were on the candy crew. That was like a little army we formed and I got those from next to a GameStop dumpster. They were gonna throw them away after a midnight release of a game. And my friend was like, yeah, we have all these for band things, come get them. And then we just gave them all away. That was actually how I got the name Candyman also. Cause I was also given about a full case of Mike and Ike's that day. And I gave them out to everyone at Rev. They were perfectly good, individual fun size packs of Mike and Ike's. And everyone was like, hey, he's the man with the candy. Candyman. And it stuck. I didn't pick that name, it was just, thrust upon me. So I got a rubber ducky over here. I keep a duck pond on the table in my shop. A little duck pond where I put ducks and they can float around. And I keep this behind the plate carrier. Never know when you're gonna need a nice foam knife. I keep it tucked up inside the plates so that I can reach it if I ever need to. You can see it's tucked up inside the plates. Secret knife! And I put some foam padding here so it doesn't chafe my neck while I'm wearing it for like 10 hours straight. I do have a holster on the front for a revolver and I'll usually throw a smoke wagon in there but it won't be loaded, it won't have CO2 because again we are not allowed to use any kind of weapon against the players. We're gonna weigh the whole plate carrier. So I would say about nine pounds. Yeah it looks like it's going up to nine. So let me show you now how I put it all on. First I gotta put on the leather jacket to protect myself from any sharp bits. And then I just kinda, so I've got one side that unhooks and unclasps. And then I throw it over my head and squeeze through. This side has a pouch that I added so that I can keep caps in there. I've got this little clamp on this side. It's a little electrical clamp that I found. And I clamp it to one of the zip ties on the front. And that holds pretty much all day. And I can flex and move. And then I gotta cover up my hair. And then on goes the hat. And now I am the candy man. I don't really have any cool voice or anything that I do because I feel like People wouldn't be able to understand me. Usually I'm wearing mesh so I don't get shot in the face. As a role player, we get shot a lot. I just use my regular voice. Now normally I don't trade anything off of the gear itself, but I will trade items that I have in my shop for things to put on the gear. So if you do come to Rev and you think you have something that would look great on this, bring it and let's do a trade. I always end up with a lot of the great quest items that could win you the patches and challenge coins that Balahek has for achievements. I always get achievement tokens. And another important part of the Candyman loadout is the candy cart. And that is the cart I bring with me and wheel it from my vehicle out to the field itself so that I can bring all the cool stuff for trade. And usually inside the cart, I have props, tradable items, and a ton of caps. I'm gonna take you outside and show you everything I keep in the candy cart. Let's go. Let's take a look at the candy cart. It's the cart I use to take out to the field and fill it with trinkets and caps so that I have stuff to trade with all of you guys. Let's go. candy cart. This is all the stuff I would have taken with me if Rev was today. Which it was supposed to be, and now it's not. Stupid 2020. Now, I'm gonna go through some of the Candyman cart and show you a few items that I use. I can't go through everything because it's packed. First, this 
was my Candyman staff. It's just like a LARP weapon that I wrapped with duct tape and some fake barbed wire. And then I put a little syringe on here because this is what they used for stim packs to heal people. So what I would do is I would go up to people and be like, boop, you're healed. And I would boop them back to life. Got a little bit of liquid in there. I think that's like Gatorade. Don't drink it. Always gotta have a seat. This is the seat I use when I'm in the store. And I sit down and I say, Welcome to the Candyman's something or other. Give me some trades. This yeah. is something I traded for. It is a prop chainsaw. Somebody traded me this, it was pretty cool. This little dude made out of coconuts was a religion's idol that they worshiped and someone stole it and traded it to me and it was part of a quest and it was really cool so I ended up hanging on to it. It's kind of like Rev History right there. This was the Candyman Staff 2.0. It's just a prop sledgehammer that I bought at Spirit Halloween. I put some fake syringes on top and I go around and be like, boop, you're healed. I say it's going to hurt for a second, but then you'll be back alive. Somebody traded me for this sword. It's a big old plastic sword. Somebody traded me for this foam wrench. I built this robot arm out of sheet metal and I don't have a battery in it right now. But if I did, this flashlight on the front would light up. If you look in here, it's wired up to take a battery. And there's a trigger in there, a switch, all up inside there. So that was my fake arm. This is usually what I wear at Fertile Crescent. This is some um, skulls somebody traded me. And that's a candy cane. This is a little strainer thing, and we use it for taking payments. They throw the caps in, and we close it up. Please pay the man. Thank you. And then they don't come out. But then you open it back up. Oh! And then in here is all caps. Pretty much the whole thing is filled with caps that I've collected over the years. Yeah, this whole thing is full all the way to the bottom of caps in the stim pack. Pretty much the whole thing is caps. I could pretty much buy everything. And then over here is my utilities. Some nails, hammers, tape. You never know what you gotta build in the apocalypse. There's a whole bunch of stuff people traded me. There's a toy giraffe. And these are cool. These are medicines. This is Buff Out from Fallout. People just take candies and make their own medicines or drugs. There's another one. Here is Radex. That one's Radex. So they're from Fallout. Somebody made those. So there is a little of everything in my Candyman cart. Here's a bag of gold. They're just gold coins. These are all the new Balahat caps that they came out with last time. They got new logos on them. These are real caps, and then everything else is considered counterfeit caps. So we got red, white, and yellow. I think white is the least expensive, yellow is medium, and red is the most expensive, I'm pretty sure. I can't really remember. And this is my duck pond that I fill up with water and I leave it on my table, and anytime someone trades me a rubber ducky, I put it in here. It's really just a hubcap. But it's my duck pond, and the duckies are never for trade. So these, this is my favorite quest that we do. It's the golden antler quest. So we have two of these golden antlers, and I'll hide one somewhere on the field, and I'll have another one. And when they come and ask for a quest, I'll show them one and say, I need you to find the matching golden antler. And every year, somebody returns the golden antler to me. And I think this, these have made it for like four years without being stolen or lost. That's everything that the candy man brings in the candy cart out to the field and I'll get there early and I'll wheel it out through the crowd of people and I'll take it to my building usually the second floor of the tower and I'll set up my little shop and I'll hang stuff all over the walls so that's it that's the candy man cart do you have anything else to do with this on? Okay. except take it off this thing is impossible to take off this is the hardest part but after a long day, taking it off is the best part. That is everything in my Candyman loadout. Again, I don't use an airsoft gun for this loadout because we're not allowed. So if you were in an apocalypse environment, what kind of loadout would you use? What weapons would you use? Let me know in the comments. Like it if I made you laugh because that was difficult to put on and take off. Pretty sure I made you laugh a little bit, even if it was just at me putting it on. Remember guys, we're all teammates, so I hope to see you guys at Rev one day, or maybe any other op, maybe a field near you. Let me know what airsoft field you go to. Maybe one day I'll get to it. And uh, just have a good day. Merry holidays, whatever you celebrate. Keep an eye out for the upcoming holiday videos that we're doing. It's gonna be really fun. We have a couple planned. Don't forget to go enter the giveaway and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Woo.